Welcome everyone. It's the 3rd of August, 2020. This is the Jenkins documentation office hours. Let's share my screen and we can talk about the topics. All right, so first let's review the agenda. So permissions to update the migration sheet. Uh, we'll just give a brief summary on that. Thanks, Jonathan, for asking and happy to have granted permissions. Then plans to create a YouTube channel or a specific playlist for video tutorials and workflow to send and publish. Good question. Uh, how to handle third party references in our documentation or oh, to our documentation. So this is a third party that is referring to Jenkins.io documentation. Uh, and then outdated Jenkins Docker image, hidden treasures of Jenkins. I think those are, I assume, well, let's, let's attach some names to these. I believe, Jonathan, this one is from you. Did I get the spelling correct, Jonathan? Hi, Vlad. Yeah, it's right. Excellent. Yes, hello. Hello, hello. hello Mike. Okay, so there is that one. Third party references in our documentation. Okay, outdated J Jenkins Docker image. Vlad, I assume that's you? Uh, yes, I added a couple items. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And then hidden treasures of Jenkins. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, any, so any other topics? Beyond those, we've probably got an hour or more of material just for just for those. Mm -hmm. Just I'm interested in configuration as code in general, but uh, uh, in case people have time, maybe we can uh, cover those in this like list hidden treasures, maybe. But yeah. okay, yeah, that's a good suggestion. All right, very good. Okay, so let's take a look at top of the list. So there is a, Jonathan had asked about a sheet that is stored. It, this is just a working spreadsheet that I had created uh, to help prioritize which existing Jenkins wiki pages should be transformed and how we're making progress on those. It was not, not intended that it would be anything perfect, but it's, it served us well enough that we've translated a few pages. So uh, the idea was that we use this to track, as we create a new issue, we put a link inside the cell for that issue, and then we can jump to that issue and see how it's progressing if we need to. Um, and Jonathan asked, hey, could he be allowed to edit it? Absolutely, so he's been given permissions. Anybody who wants permissions, just open up the sheet and click this, uh, the button here on your view, it will be request access. And I'll happily grant it. I'm more than happy to have other people help with proposing and thinking about where information should be placed in the documentation. Mark, do you want to call that, um, I don't know, the wiki migration sheet or something? I don't know, does anybody other than us look at that? That's a good. Minutes. That's a good idea. Yeah. Make sure that they don't make migration more than it is. Right. Yeah. Very good. Thanks. Okay, Jonathan, did that address the question you had there, or was there more to it? No, oh, it's exactly to the permission I needed to create new issues and update the existing one. Great. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank All right, you. so next one then is create a YouTube channel or a specific playlist for video tutorials. I like this one a lot because there are already a number of, I like the, the idea a lot because there are many videos out there, many tutorials already out there, and, and a playlist on the Jenkins channel would be great to, on the Jenkins, yeah, Jenkins channel would be great to have. We, we have a playlist for docs, but for me, that's more about meetings. Whereas I like a tutorials playlist as an idea to just capture tutorials. Therefore, 
people who look at that playlist will never see anything on it that's not a tutorial for something. Uh, how do we do that? We, so the, someone needs to send a proposal, propose a new playlist to the advocacy and outreach SIG. And unless you've got a, a better suggestion, I'm going to call it Jenkins Tutorials. And so, Jonathan, if you want to take the lead on this one, that'd be great. You, you could do it either through the mailing list or through the Gitter channel or through the, the meeting, the regularly scheduled meetings. Mm, Any one of those okay. would be fine. So I just need to send the request to create the playlist on Gitter's channel. Yeah, well, and what I would suggest is not just a, pr a proposal to create the list, but also, um, so propose to create the list plus the playlist plus propose some initial content. And I believe oh, yeah. playlists are allowed to contain links to other videos that are not actually in the Jenkins channel. And therefore, um, videos for the playlist, so initial videos for the playlist, and that would lobby this thing right here, the Jenkins Minute playlist, is some really elegant one and two minute videos that highlight how to use specific features of Jenkins pipeline in ways that people might not have considered. And it's an yeah. ideal candidate for something to, oh, I've only got one minute. I want to learn something about declarative pipeline. A Jenkins Minute video is a great thing to do. Yeah, when I was working with another project, I created a playlist called Green Food Five Minutes. I link there in my proposal. It's uh, several videos with five minutes and uh, with instructions to use the, that too. Uh, and that time, I don't know how it's working now uh, at the YouTube, but uh, it, it is possible as us as collaborate, co collaborators, uh, users on the, G the Jenkins channel. We upload our videos and after some review, uh, they can be approved, like a process to send the content. Yeah, so, so now you're highlighting, I think, uh, the workflow for who gets yeah. access to that. And, and what we've got right now is today, um, upload permission is granted to uh, several people, right? So oh, Jenkins, okay. Jenkins channel upload permission is granted. Um, so, for instance, me, Oleg, uh, five or six others. Uh, and, but so we may have to talk further about what would it mean to, how do people submit a new, how do people submit a proposed video? Because I don't think we want to give the typical video creator upload permission to the Jenkins channel. They're yeah, I, I understand. So. Uh, it's a kind of a, a decision to make because, for example, if I make a video and uh, upload it for a drive content, so you get a, a new uh, responsibility to get the video, approve it, upload it, it on the YouTube. So maybe it's a several new tasks to you, for example. But uh, if you give to us the collaborator role we can already upload the video once approve it you just hit on the button publish it's on a idea for example great okay as so a, that... yeah as a collaborator i, I can't uh, uh, upload and publish the video at the same time i just upload it Is there, I don't know, maybe I'm being too anal. I would like to see some sort of a process where nobody could upload a video that they created without somebody else saying yes. I thought that was what Jonathan just described. Oh, okay. 
wasn't that maybe I misunderstood. I so see. Jonathan, okay, so that's the upload, but not published. Okay. Yeah. So so tell us again. Describe it again. So how has it worked for you in the past? It's collaborators upload, but cannot make it visible to the public. Yes, exactly. Just the approval host can review the video and click click on publish. <laughs> I like that. So what that so so there there is a that gives a way for a collaborator to propose something and they propose it in the context of YouTube so I can see the proposal by viewing it but they don't have yeah, to make it visible to the public. No way, no, not visible. Just that load. It's too fast. Uh, it's similar to Word Word WordPress publish publish, publish view. I don't know how it is uh, right now on YouTube because uh, there is a new tool for a video edition there. Recently, they published a new version of YouTube. Yeah, and I'm used to, I'm so maybe if you're okay with it, watch what I do here and you tell me if this looks at all familiar to you. So I'm, I'm switching to the Jenkins account now. Oops. You don't need to watch the Jenkins minutes, sorry. So I'm now in the Jenkins account. And there's a facility here where I can click create a video or post that lets me upload or create posts. So this is how I usually upload the, the meeting minutes or the, uh, the meeting recordings. Is this the kind of experience that you've had when you've submitted as a collaborator? Yeah, it's similar, but uh, the next uh, screen, maybe you can choose a private video, uh, public video, or uh, not visible video. As a collaborator, I don't you I enhance private videos. Yeah, this is. As a collaborator, I, I only can uh, send the private videos. I see, okay. Approval. I can share the link. I, I can do not more than upload and delete the video, for example, if I upload the raw one. Interesting. Okay, so that that sounds. If you'd be willing to include that in your proposal to the to the advocacy and outreach uh, okay. list, that write, would be great. Okay, I will write a proposal with uh, instructions and print explain how it works. Yeah, I, I think that, that sounds great to me. So now in terms of, oops, there was playlists. I meant to go there. Just a minute. Okay. So we've got playlists today. Let's see if we've got one that's called tutorials already. Okay. I don't see one called tutorial, but their search is imperfect at best. Okay. So... Okay, no use of the word tutorial. We've got pipeline authoring, for instance, but this is again mostly used for meeting meeting recordings, not for demonstrations. So I, I like the idea of a tutorials a tutorials playlist. That sounds really good. Okay. Do we want to subdivide it like by pipelines versus admin or something like that? Or I don't know, it depends how many we're going to have, I suppose. You, well, so let's let's test it. We've got we've got the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. So theirs is their just their SIG meeting and demonstrations. If we were to look at their demonstrations, okay, here we go. You are UI overhaul methodology in progress video. Um, how to create UI themes. So these here are some that are tutorials. So I'm not sure I would do a subset until until the playlist becomes unwieldy. But but I'm I'm not an expert at this. Jonathan, in your experience, did the did the other organization you were working with have guidelines on how long they would allow a playlist to become? No, there is no limit. For example, tutorials is uh, kind of generic. I I like it only tutorials. But uh, for example, you can uh, subdivide it by years with hashtag. For example, tutorials 2020, tutorials 2021. Oh. Uh, by hashtag. 
for sure. Okay, so and and so the and hashtag is then. Tutorial. Got it. Okay, so for instance, the, if there's a let let me see if I can find one here with a label. Is the hashtag it's on just Egyptian moves? Just hit on the three dots on the right. There. there. Okay. Uh, oh no, not there. Where is the dish option? Well, and, and it may be that there are no labels on this one, but but the hashtag just refers to a label. So we can categorize yeah. within a playlist by label. Yeah, great. Kind of uh, label. I like that. So if you're willing to take the lead on that and and send that proposal, that's great. Okay, I understand. I um, make the proposal I send it. Yeah. What about maintenance and obsolescent issues with this? Um, I'm wondering if it would at least help if each video was clearly identified as to the date it was made and the Jenkins release that it was done on would make it because I some of these things I some of these I'm familiar with and they are close to three years old and they're still very good but there's going to be things that are obsolete in them um, especially yep. any anything that's more than two months old the whole manage Jenkins stuff looks different yeah for so starters here's here's the poster child of something that is horribly outdated and I still regularly get comments thanking me for it right so so I in 2014 uh what is that six years ago now I created a video called Jenkins in five minutes notice the version number on this screen is oh, 1.562 wow. we are now at 2.235 so this is this is ancient and yet there are still periodically people who say hey thanks it's really 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 old but it still oddly enough works. <laughs> so, so yes, I think dated, I'm not worried about deleting dated, but I think having some way of showing to the, to the viewer how old this is, is a healthy thing. Right. So at least if I look at it, it's like my screen doesn't look anything like this. If it was right. made last week, I'm concerned. Exactly. Uh, if yeah, it's if... five years old, yeah, so. Good, very good, okay, so to advocacy and outreach. With, uh, with workflow proposal. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, now it looks like we may have lost Jonathan or at least video. Uh, it's yep, okay, so we may we may want to well, let's take the next one because I think we can get the, oh, wait a second, and I'll bet you I failed to do the recording of this just, a, no, we are recording, good, okay. You said you were recording, That's, you don't I, tend to lie. I, I will, I have, this is a win, That's great. Okay, so how to handle third-party references to our documentation. Um, the the example here I would would use is, CloudBees uh, docs team refers to Jenkins docs docs in some of their material. And what I would propose is we borrow their technique, whatever it is. And I haven't looked at it in detail. Uh, Mark to insert the technique. Um, because they have a way of because all of our all of our content is Creative Commons, um, there is an attribution process. Uh, attribution process exists, and uh, we can we can invite people who reference our materials to follow it. So Jonathan, there all right. Back. Uh, yeah, great. So Jonathan, the idea here is that there's, there is a product, there's a team inside the CloudBees development organization that does this with cloudbees.com where they sometimes refer to Jenkins.io pages and they, they've got a, a technique they use for, for noting that this is taken from Jenkins.io.
now I'm not sure that is specifically your question. So I was taking it as third party references to our documentation. The next question probably should be how to handle references, how to refer to, to other people's documentation. Hello guys. Jenkins hey Jonathan. Jonathan. So this I one we had a connection. Good to have you back. So started started a discussion on the list, on the docs list with cloudbees.com, cloudbees source material um, as baseline as a, as one example. And I can link to that. Let's see, we should be able to find that in the docs list. Jank, Google Groups, Docs. Jenkins documentation. And this was something like, Maybe Tammy is a good choice of, nope. Uh, how about uh, contributing? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> what would I have done with that description, Meg? Um. Wait, was it a recent one? It was, yeah. Okay. So I'm perplexed. I'll have to include a link to it into the doc separately. I, it's it's odd that I can't find it. So Jenkins, Jenkins contributing documentation. Oh, these Mark, wait. See if Google will find it. There we go. Contributing documentation from other sources. Okay, now we just have to find that in the official interface. That's kind of sad that I couldn't find it with Google's, but I can't. Oh, oh, that's because it's in the Jenkins dev list. Got it. That's uh -huh. the problem. Okay, just a minute. Google Groups. Dev. Here we go. Okay, so this is the thing that I wanted to embed there. That notes that they are willing to, CloudBees is willing to allow the Jenkins project to take their documentation and rework it if we wish for use with Jenkins in those cases where it makes sense. Uh, they, they were talking about alternatives there and what this, what, how it could be used and how it wouldn't be used, et cetera. Okay, I think we've covered that topic. Any other questions on that topic before we go on to Docker images? Yeah, just uh, one question, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, the past week I work on the, the migration of the page about the JMeter uh, use with Jenkins, okay? And uh, that specific page, the original, the original page, it's a, a, a copy paste from the author post blog. Okay, so but uh, it's a, a kind of uh, out of date content. So I use uh, some videos from internet and some other posts to 
rewrite the content to a you update one okay so what i i it's not a copy paste from the others but it uh, the other content was used by source to create our content we need to reference all the sources or not because it's a new content we we can just publish without reference no one what what the preference what is good, the preference? good question so I would think that you would you would prefer to include a hyperlink at the end of the page to the um, original sources to the sources. Uh, if, if, yeah, yeah. I, my thought was that if if you found them useful in creating the content, others will probably find them useful if they need more information about it. Yeah, I think the same. Uh, there is another point. For example, one of the best videos I use by reference, it's a video promoting a, a course from Edureka. I, I don't know if you, you know it, but it's a, a open uh, video where a, they make a live uh, teaching how to use Jenks with Jmeter. But in that video, there is a good samples about how to use it. So I use some examples, uh, from, uh, samples from the, that video in our content. Uh, we can have a Cedreca, for example, or because it's a school with uh, financial uh, interest, in, we can't have a to it. That's okay. That's a good question, and that's one I yeah. don't know the answer on because, in in this case. What you're doing is, are you intending to embed the video into the page or are you no, just, just taking the concepts that they were describing and describing them again? Yeah, yeah. Take the concepts and describe it again. But if, if the reader want to know about the another source content, please visit the link, for example. Or, or not. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a that's a good question, and I don't know what the it's a very good question. And I don't know the rules, so let's invite them to click the link for more info. Yeah, yeah, because when everything is open source, there is no problem. We just put the link there. But when the content is free, but was recorded by a, a, a uh, I don't know in English financial institution, it's not open source. Uh, I, well, it's but, but now Legion, the but the video is freely viewable from the internet. Yeah, yeah, it's free. It was a, a event like a hack hack fest. Okay. I'd recommend make an event like hack fest and publish the public uh, open video there, so yeah. we can reference to them or not. I think because uh, yeah, I think you'd be allowed to reference it, uh, even embed it and and uh, include a link for more info uh, meg or vlad do you have further guidance i don't have as much legal experience in this boundary between open source and commercial entities as i might like yeah i i uh don't have uh, as you mark legal any experience on that but uh like common sense to me is in case it is a video format, I guess uh, any author can implement this uh, video in their own uh, 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 repository, for instance, or uh, setup and uh, comment on this, say, well, this is implementation, this is how performance testing using JMeter can be done. Uh, in case if you want, you can reference i think the a video from which you took but it since it is different format i like my first impression that it is not necessary to reference but it will not hurt but again there is on my side there is no legal experience on that uh, but in case if it is the same format then of course you need to reference well this is the video whatever but yeah uh, actually, this relates to the question uh, on clarification on the previous topic about video materials that we wanted to paste on um, 
uh, YouTube after this process, which uh, Jonathan will initiate, will be approved. Uh, we are talking about kind of official videos from CloudBees and Jenkins project. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah, from it, everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is very important, Mark, because for example, uh, when I, I use a link from Oracle, from Microsoft, uh, from a authority institution, for example, uh, I, I may, uh, maybe I, I can trust uh, a hundred percent because the link is pointing to a institution, confer, uh, secret institution. But for example, when I, I point a link to uh, person, personal blog, for example, I, I can't uh, guarantee the, the content from the link is always trustable. It's clear to you this this, this point. Is I think clear? so. I so I think yeah. so. From a from an individual, not clear how trustworthy that is, right? Yeah, because to to approve all the, the the person can use a, a nice content, but the content from the page maybe can change the future and uh, become some bad issues to Jenkins, for example. So it's important to uh, have a, a rule about this. Good insight. And I, I, I've certainly seen what I'd call trivial examples of that. We've had simple examples where a wiki link is now broken, worked before yeah. and is now broken. Yeah, right. as yeah, as an so. example, or where I suspect in Vlad's tests of broken links on Jenkins.io, some of the links there from six or seven years ago may in fact now be broken because the page no longer exists. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm not sure, Jonathan. What's your are you you're proposing here? How we handle that, or? what we should do or rather that we need to set a policy and get agreements from the governance board on. No, yes, I just do want a instruction and uh, how I need to proceed with the point of links. Maybe I, I can uh, send the links for revision and uh, if you approve it, it publish. Uh, just for make a warning about the talk. Good, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's a valid question. It's a good one. So, for instance, uh, derivative text is the one that text that's really the cloudbees.com, the cloudbees docs team question. But then you identified a really good one, which is a uh, ideas or concepts from videos or uh, from a video or other source or then literally embed the video from another source. Yeah. Because we certainly have, we have already examples of, maybe we put it here as a different one, embedded video from YouTube. We have, have those examples already, right? And they exist in the, in the uh, solutions pages already do that, uh, some blog posts do that, and, and others. So, so that's already done, but if we were embedding video, for instance, from oracle.com or from adoptopenjdk.net, uh, that may be a different thing. Exactly, exactly. Good, okay. Yeah, it, 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 there is another point too about the links. Because uh, this is impact the Jenkins IO uh, seal Google seal robots about ranking and everything. So if Jenkins IO is pointing to a bad reputation site or issue sites, maybe can be affect the punctuations of Jenkins.io. Right. It's important. Worry about. 
and it's really search engine search engine scoring is reduced if we have broken links yeah um, exactly poorly formatted pages etc yeah good okay or search engine i guess it's ranking right that's how they call it all right anything else on that particular topic jonathan no 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 i absolutely thank you all right Okay, so Vlad replacing the outdated Jenkins Docker image. Uh, let's discuss further. Uh, well, this is a continuation of previous, uh, a follow-up kind of previous uh, discussion that we had. Uh, currently, we're using in our documentation and tutorials and everywhere, blows on Jenkins CI image, which is, I guess, uh, officially outdated, considered outdated. So, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, how we approach of changing uh, documentation, which my understanding is generated uh, uh, on Jenkins IO, uh, we can um, implement on our own tutorials. And I'm talking, well, currently on behalf of me, but maybe it will be useful for any contributor, any technical writer. Uh, we can implement tutorials using some kind of built Docker image based on this official image. And when we implement, when we verify the tutorial works, we can document it. Uh, well, other approach, we can just uh, try to sync uh, different pieces of sources of our current documentation by replacing uh, Jenkins, uh, we kind of try and guess without implementation first and do uh, PRs uh, uh, and issues and so on. Uh, so, uh, like, which approach would be the best one? And in general, what is the approach of uh, replacing uh, generated documentation? Because I found out that when you are doing this uh, ad hoc changing, there are different sources of documentation which needed to be in sync, at least. Well, documentation, our documentation points that in case if you are changing this piece of doc, make sure that another piece of documentation will be changed and so on. Um, so, uh, um, kind of different approaches, like uh, doing implementation first, and after that, uh, documenting it in some detached repository of your own, and uh, see if Jenkins project will adopt this and maybe include in their own repository. Or, yeah. Sorry for this kind of messy explanation, but uh, oh, oh no, no, no! I think I think your explanation is spot on. I'm going to try to show an example of what you used the phrase, the word generated documentation here, and it took me a little bit to think what that means in the context of these tutorials. I wanted to show an example of the tutorials so that it's clear what that means, because it's I would call it derived or maybe maybe reused because what we've got is we've got some segments of source files which are used which are written once and used many times mm -hmm. and because of that if we change one of those written once used many times uh, it will change it everywhere and the changing it everywhere could be disastrous if we suddenly broke a tutorial mm -hmm. right and, and related to this i have a question which I'm not sure if you know the answer, it will be great. Uh, do we have some uh, pieces in our documentation which are generated by the code or not? By the we, code, I mean some, some, some programming language generates. We do also, yes. So there are, there are pieces of the Jenkins pipeline, the pipeline syntax reference here, mm -hmm. which is, entirely generate oh no let's see not this one we need the pipeline steps reference 
Mm -hmm. This one is entirely generated by code. Mm -hmm. and, and it's enormous. And if we look at some of its examples, mm -hmm. some of the things are absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. here's, here's one of the poster children. Mm -hmm. It has a number of different steps, each with detailed documentation. This is for one tiny thing. If I then look at, there's another step called checkout that is probably 10 or 100 times bigger than that. So yes, there is generated code, definitely. There's mm -hmm. definitely generated content. Mm -hmm. So on the tutorial question that you were asking, so back to the, what, what should our approach be in trying to replace the blue ocean image? Um, the, the fundamental challenge is we have one, two, three, four, uh, five, maybe only four. I think one of those may not be, but each of these, this, okay, this is a skip. This one, build a Java app with Maven, uses very common steps, mm -hmm. and I believe uses the same source file to describe those common steps to get started. Mm -hmm. This run Jenkins in Docker, and on Mac OS and Linux, or on Windows, those things are relatively common. And then, yes, here's using the Blue Ocean container, run the setup wizard, and now, this is where we finally get into something that is distinct. The same pattern follows here, where the standard description is there, and then fork and clone the sample repo. This is where it gets specific to this, de this demonstration. Mm -hmm. Likewise for the Python, Python code. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think that's what you're referencing when you're talking about generated. Did I understand correctly? Uh, yes, I was not sure if, uh, since there are a lot of uh, links to different sources and all the sources are included in different pieces, I thought maybe it is generated as well as there are pipeline signatures, which you pointed before. I was not sure about this, but thanks for clarifying. Uh, also, just my understanding, it would, again, from the common sense, maybe it would be better to leave the current outdated image Jenkins CI Blue Ocean somewhere uh, because maybe there are people, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are still using this image in their, uh, well, in, in their everyday job or whatever. Uh, uh, so maybe removing this completely would be not wise. Uh, uh, yeah, but I guess I will try to figure out the best approach. I was just wanted to share uh, some thoughts on, on this. Uh, yeah, so, so my, my initial thought anyway was we leave Blue Ocean mm -hmm. and its tutorials mm -hmm. as they are. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and admit that they are stable. It'll, they'll keep being, the, the image will keep being updated because it's automatic. But then we create a one or we create new tutorials and just one at a time that uh, uses the standard image, not Blue Ocean. Mm -hmm and replaces one of the existing tutorials. Say, for instance, uh, Java with Maven mm -hmm. might be an example, or um, Java with, or, let's see, yeah, Java with Maven or Python with Pi installer. Mm -hmm. The idea being, let's create that thing and then once we've verified it all works and is well behaved, mm -hmm. and well behaved means runs on Windows, runs on Mac OS, runs on Linux, um, 
then we would replace the page with this new tutorial. And we've, we've now got something that no longer uses Blue Ocean. Um, then iterate on each of the, each of the tutorials, the mm -hmm. current tutorials. Mm -hmm. to replace Blue Ocean mm -hmm. image with the standard image. Mm -hmm. Is, does that address your question, Vlad? Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for uh, yeah, uh, talking about this. Excuse me, more thoughts. Mark. Mark. Yes. Yeah, maybe in the future, and when we finish all the immigration work, uh, be, can be wise if we work in the kind of uh, new template for documentation. For example, the, the Vlad uh, showed us a issue. We can't, for example, uh, set a part of the documentation as the deprecate, uh, like uh, Blue Oceans. Uh, so we can uh, put a flag, the alert to user uh, presentation, and uh, this is the, the depreciate way to use Jenkins, please. Uh, use the new one or visit the link to get uh, how everything works in the past. So maybe we need a, a workflow to move the old content for a new page and just put a link from the main content. Just for example, now we just use our Docker image, Jinx Docker images, but if you looking for a Blue Ocean image, please click here. For example, mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. I I don't know that we need a formal. I wouldn't think of a formal deprecation process for that, because the, if we were to use this technique, we create a new tutorial and use it to replace an existing. So we create a new Java with Maven tutorial using the standard image instead of the Blue Ocean Docker image, and that standard image still has Blue Ocean installed in it. It still has all the capabilities, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's just using a better image than the, than the Blue Ocean Docker image. Yeah, it's a big problem to solve. It's not so easy. <laughs> Agreed, yes, wholehearted agreement. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Robert. And anything else there, Vlad, on that topic? Um, no, I guess. Well, we can talk <laughs> about this, but yeah. okay. Move on. <laughs> All right. So then, next topic was hidden treasures of, of Jenkins. Uh, yeah. Again, this is a follow up on previous discussions. Uh, maybe you recall we spoke during last office hours about about. Uh, or hidden treasures of Jenkins, uh, something that actually you mentioned. And I wanted to uh, make sure that we're on the same page when we list which are those treasures and which are, if they, those are hidden. <laughs> like, so we'll use the same terminology in this case. And I like listed some of those, but I'm not sure if those are considered treasures and hidden and just looking for approval from the, the panel. Yeah, so for me, pipeline syntax generator is one that, uh, the another is the Blue Ocean pipeline editor. Mm -hmm. uh, don't, don't design pipeline state diagrams yourself. Mm -hmm. But, uh, in a text editor, let mm -hmm. Jenkins do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, declarative pipeline, there is also the declarative pipeline syntax generator. Though so for me, at least, I've found the Blue Ocean interface to it more comfortable. 
but they should be aware of it. So that's another good one to highlight. Say, hey, don't write declarative syntax. Let Jenkins do it. Mm -hmm. Now, configuration as code, oh, oh, actually, maybe that's a fun one. The pipeline installation manager utility. Is it plugin or is it a utility? It's a separate program. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not a plugin because it has to be run before Jenkins is running. Mm -hmm. um, and but it will let you give a you give a list of plugins and optionally their version numbers and it will install those download those plugins and their dependencies. I usually put in this inside Docker file and is it when you're referring to plugins.txt file which you copy in the uh, corresponding directory and all these plugins with their versions will be dynamically installed from CLI kind of, well, not CLI, but from uh, after building Docker image. Yes, yes, that's, you've, you've understood a, an exact use case for it. Mm -hmm. Today, yeah. uh, plugins.txt in the Docker image mm -hmm. is actually installed by, uh, handled today by a, a script called install dash plugins.sh. Right. And that thing does not do dependencies and lacks several other crucial features that pipeline installation, the, the plugin, pipeline, plugin installation manager program mm -hmm. uh, provides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, it's coming coming as a preview or coming as, yeah, I think as a preview to the Jenkins Docker image. There's a pull request for it. So that in your Docker image, instead of, you would have the option to say, instead of running install plugins.sh, you could run the plugin installation manager program and let it do its, the computation work. Okay, so I need to take a look. It is kind of alternative approach instead of uh, using utility or build image using uh, to, using copy this install plugins. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Either or. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't have any suggestion to new users what to use, right? Oh, oh, see, so for new users will either today use of docker will either use install plugins.sh mm -hmm. or they'll use the plugin installation manager once it becomes available in preview i see so plugin is not yet uh, correct mm -hmm. okay um and maybe related to this mark if you don't mind the last question that i put configuration as code i was um well it's kind of related to installation. Uh, uh, Oleg has very interesting demo configures code when he using Groovy scripts, bypassing um, uh, admin, uh, entering ad admin from secrets location and just instantiating this in Jenkins instance with already ready to uh, pre-configured users with all their privileges. But he's using Groovy scripts, which I guess uh, is more for advanced users. And it's I'm targeting more novice, like new users. I was thinking, is it possible to use uh, configuration as code with this um, uh, YAML file? I guess is it Jenkins YAML or something like this, uh, where we can define users or we need only to do this bypass um, uh, admin uh, login 
uh, through groovy scripts. I mean, can we do complex work of uh, pre-installing, pre-configuring users? Well, I'm talking about just one user, for instance, using um, configuration as code uh, YAML file. This is the question. I, or should we ask this in a special interest group? Or That's a good question. I so I think what you're really asking is what are the limitations mm -hmm. of conf of Jenkins configuration as code, mm -hmm. right? And and I know so no plugin installation, so it won't install plugins for you. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that it could. Oh, it. Let's say it differently. What what are the key capabilities? So, for example, it can define the system configuration. Uh, that's which authentication scheme to use, etc. I don't know if it can define users, but I suspect so. Uh, it can define the. It can actually define s jobs. Mm -hmm. Using job DSL and the seed job concept. Hmm. And I let's see. Let me do a quick check. To, we could we could look at Oleg's repository, for instance. And I suspect we could see in his, or I could check mine to see if which things, for instance, I'm pretty sure that I'm defining folders. Um, but yeah, so the question then that you were asking, and I don't know the answer is, let's put it here as open questions. Can JCASC mm -hmm. define users, groups, etc. Right, kind and of pre-install, pre pre-install, pre configure, yeah, define, just fine. And that would be by security realm too, right? I think it does, you can configure LDAP with it, I think. Yeah, in this case, I, the LDAP would usually mean it would be using an external LDAP source, but but yeah, the, the notion is still, can I define users and groups for this demonstration, for this environment? and I know that Oleg's demo definitely does define users and groups, but I don't know if he's doing it with Groovy scripting or with just using JCASC and if he's doing that for convenience of his for his own convenience or because of it was a limitation. Well, a uh, lot of times they just use the Jenkins user database or something and populate that, which is not yeah. something you're apt to do in, you know, in a production system that isn't what you're going to do. Right, and and Oleg has very specific roles that he's defined in his demonstration and they are quite elegant how, how they work, but I don't know which technique he's using to define them. Yeah, and I'm thinking about just, just one demo user, uh, demo demo who will be admin at the same time. So uh, to yeah. do this tutorial, something like this, like not, not sophisticated kind of team of <laughs> 10 users and 10 folders and so on. Well, and so for that level, there's there are already instructions in the existing tutorials that guide the user and the user just logs in as himself. So, so that I think if it's just a single user use case, we've got that in the tutorials already that we can reference. Using UI basically, is it? Uh, it, it just relies on the Jenkins startup process that uh, requires that they find and enter the initial default password. Um, they have to find the generated password in the log file, enter it, and then mm -hmm. create their own account so that it mm -hmm. starts off by default secure. Right. So it create uh, create account using UI basically. And create new right. user. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. I was I was thinking like a little bit to simplify this process so they can just. Hmm? Start the dev. <laughs> yeah, and, and given given the pattern that we've seen in other systems, I suspect the Jenkins project won't take 
very happily to the notion of putting on Jenkins.io a default username and password because secure by default has been such a such an important thing for as broadly as we're deployed. Oh, I see. All right. So we have we have hit our hour. Any other things that we need to discuss here today? All right, let's call this session good enough. Thanks very much for joining. I'll upload the recording of it later today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Fabulous. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.